a welcome to grumpy old men all the way from uh, Amazon Cafe in mm. Taimung. You, you've sort of upped your uh, shirt game recently. Well, yeah, this is not a new shirt, but yes, it's not a, a, a checked shirt or a plaid shirt, so it is unusual for this uh, venue. You're yeah. getting into the spirit of um, uh, tropical weather, because it has been oh. very oh. tropical. I got spots on my ass. It's, oh. it's, Sorry? it's so hot. Yeah, heat rash. I'm very sensitive. I'm from Iowa. It's, it's very cold in Iowa yeah, half the year. And yeah, it's uh, my skin does not react well to this heat at all, and constantly being damp, constantly. So I'm glad we're here. It is it is somewhat air conditioned here. Uh, Could you show not... us the spots? Yeah, sure. Oh, better not. Better I'll not. do anything for the channel, man. I'm, I'm I'll sure. do anything, and that's appreciated. Come to our special member section to see Steve's Steve spots. Steve spots. Yes. Yeah. And but, uh, know, take my word for it, I'm, I'm, I'm not made for this kind of heat, and yet I'm here by choice, and I love it here. It's uh, one of the prices we pay. People would watch it and say, oh, I saw the vlog, but I thought it needed ironing. Or something like that. I can't remember how the joke goes. <clears throat> but um, yeah, well, this is a program where we speak for approximately one hour about nothing in particular, and we always arrive saying, well, what are we talking about this week? <laughs> Now, I did have a few things to talk about. Um, yes, it has been very hot. Yes, we are at Amazon Cafe on the road to Kaolak from Taimung. Taimung. Good for you, yes. And um, it's got a great big white turtle out the front. Mm. Uh, we're at a PTT station. And why are we here? Because it's air conditioned. It's air conditioned, yes. damn straight. Now, I will say this turtle, if you're ever around Taimung, uh, first of all, go to the fun run in Bang Tong tomorrow. Uh, that I'm supposed to be promoting and I constantly forget. You realize promote. by the time this will be uploaded, it would have been Ooh, over. Well, it'll be that, it's tomorrow, yeah. It's, uh, never mind about the fun run. Sorry, lady. Get ready for next year's. Uh, but this PTT station has an enormous white fiberglass turtle out front that lights up at night. Uh, different colors, it's in, uh, illuminated from the inside. And it was really gorgeous two years when I got here. And in the meantime, it got dirty and somebody, rather than uh, cleaning it, they decided to paint it white uh, with like white latex house paint. And now it lights up, but you can only see the colors underneath the turtle because it's been painted white. I, I don't know why they did that, but it's taken something very special out of this place that I used to enjoy. Are you and considering leaving? Uh, well, no, I'm not, and oh. I understand it's, okay. it's a plastic turtle in front of a gas station. I get that, I get that. Uh, but Is it plastic? Well, plexiglass, uh, fiberglass, I would guess. I, I would I, describe it as a stealth turtle. Never, oh, yeah. Because it's yeah. sort of made in, in flat, Facets. with flat bits. Yeah, it has, it's cut like a gem. It's not smooth and round, which makes it look not so much like a turtle, because the one thing about a turtle is it's all organic, round, smooth shapes. Remind me to take a photo on our way out so I can okay. at least show them what we're talking The stealth turtle. If we're ever yeah. talking about the stealth turtle, you know the one we're speaking of. <laughs> this, you don't hear this turtle coming. <laughs> it's very quiet it turtle. It evades radar. This is one of those turtles that evades radar. Under the radar. You don't have a stealth turtle, do you? <laughs> take that, Bangkok. Take that, M-sphere. So you're... you're yeah. Uh, you've got an advantage over me in that, well, apart from many, your, many, apart from your yes. good looks, right? Um, yeah. th you have been in Tai Mung, Mung, mm -hmm. Panga, uh, for a previous hot season. Is this year hotter than last yeah. year? Yeah. Well, my perception of it, yes. Uh, I have a thermometer in my home. I don't ever look at it, uh, but it is my impression. Yes, this is hotter than it was last year. That is my subjective uh, impression, yes. Uh, another thing, apart from those people moving because we were making too much noise, yeah. all the mosquitoes were bad. Sorry. Uh, I've noticed the la a week ago, a week? Yeah, about a week ago, we had some big swells coming in, mm. uh, all the way from the Indian Ocean. Good two or three meter swells crashing onto the, uh, the beach the longest beach in Thailand, I think we've established that. And it has reshaped the yeah. beach, and not in a small way. 
Yeah. Like in a big way. It's very dramatic, yes. So the beach sort of used to just go gently, gently down and then it got to the shoreline and sort of dropped as you went into the water. Now it's sort of, it's flat, flat, flat and then down for about five meters and then it flattens out as you get in the water. Yeah. So you're actually having to walk out, I don't know, 20, 30 meters before you start getting into the deep. So it's really radically changed the shape yeah. of the beach. Yeah, you have to drop six feet and, and getting down to the beach is not as difficult. You can kind of slide down the berm, but getting back up, man, you have to climb up six feet of almost vertical. Oh, it's more uh, than six feet. Well, yeah. where we are, it's well, about the, four or five meters. The, uh, it, A it, meter is just over a yard. Thank you. It, uh, uh, it's, it's difficult to get back from the beach. There is a wall in front of you. You have to scale the wall. And that's, yeah, that'll be there for six months. It'll come and go. The, the beach will change every single tide. Uh, every single high tide, the, the uh, beach will change. That's one of the great joys of living here. Uh, I was on the beach this morning and we're starting to get uh, more I trash on the beach and that's what I look for. I, I walk on the beach once or twice every day and I look for trash that I collect and uh, interesting trash, colorful trash, pretty trash. And uh, I noticed that today it's starting to change and there's starting to be more trash. The winds are shifting. Well, we must be at the, uh, the Paris end of Turtle Beach because uh, not a lot of trash at no. our end. Not yet, there will be, but yeah, the Ampo does a good job. Uh, the boys at the college, the Vogue Tech College, when they uh, break a rule, they're sent out on the beach. To I think being just to right out the front of the Alba tour does help. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> in front of Town Hall. Yeah, so it is kept clean within what we would call town. It is uh, number uh, 26. Anybody? Who's got 26? 20. That's your number. Not Go 25. Your sit down, sit down. It. Uh, uh, yeah, I was saying something. I, uh, You're talking about clue. the trash on the beach. Yeah, it's it's, and I'm I'm yeah, I, I am disappointed to go out there in the morning and find a clean beach. I ride the bicycle <laughs> ten kilometers to get there. I've got three shopping bags in my hand. I'm ready to collect trash, and there's just dribs and drabs. There's a little of this, a little of that, but nothing really interesting on the beach. Does it really look like the the mad rubbish man with your uh, on your bike with yeah. your empty shopping bags yeah yeah people don't don't talk to me they, they avoid eye contact but uh, yeah it's I am disappointed to find a clean beach and it has been clean through the high season where now the like I said the winds are changing and uh, there will be more uh, trash I have come back from the beach with 300 300 cigarette lighters in my bag at the height of the monsoon. And you bought 299 of them. Only 299 yeah. came in my pocket. That 300th lighter I found on the beach. It's a lot of cigarettes. But yeah, there's a, you know, I'll fill those. That's why I take three trash bags. And one of the bags is uh, for things that I don't collect to make art with, but simply want to get off the beach because they're dangerous for turtles. Uh, nets, old nets, uh, clear plastic bags that look like jellyfish. Uh, old uh, uh, lures, old fishing lures. Uh, I'll fill a bag with that stuff and just throw it in the garbage can at the remain of the tin dredging. Now you got some exciting news this week. Um, so, well, you told me to say you've got some exciting news. Oh! So I, I should remind you firstly that Steve does have his own YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> some, Very kind of you. For some reason they gave him a channel but uh, I believe they might be asking for it back. However, in the meantime, Steve, um, not content with just one channel. Oh, I see. Wants to get the jump on me. And uh, Steve is launching a new channel. Over to you, Steve. Ba -da 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 yeah, well, I, I have this talent. I, I spin plates on sticks and I can't really show it off here. So I'm going to have the Steve Ross spinning plates channel. I'd watch that. Yeah. With your empty uh, trash bags in one hand? Actually, no. I am going to launch a channel called Beach Combing on Turtle Beach. May Beach 1st. Combing with Steve. Beach Combing with Steve Ross on Turtle Beach. Did you figure out how to do it? Yes, I did. They make it very easy. They want you to have many channels. So they made it very easy. Uh, I'm going to do it on the first of every month, starting May 1st. I'm going to go through the, the monsoon season, 
and show people this change we've just been talking about right. in the beach. Right, right, right. Right now the beach is clean. The first installment, which will be on Monday after the Sunday that this airs, uh, is a relatively clean beach because I wanted people to see the beach at its best when it is relatively clean. A month from now that beach will be ankle deep in trash. Uh, so it's uh, I've, I've launched it a week before the monsoon, uh, a month before the monsoons. What's it called? It's called Beach Combing on Turtle Beach, Thailand. It, 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 if you click the button. Well, there's no videos there yet until Monday. I don't know if it shows up without a video on it, but Beach uh, Combing. Beach Combing, all one word. Right. On Turtle Beach, and that should take you there you shouldn't need the end look at that it actually filled beach combing at turtle beach going shelling on turtle beach florida yeah no uh, it's not coming up yeah oh well um hopefully when i put a video there it will come there's up. only 39 other beach combing on turtle beaches so uh really <laughs> did you well, check if the name's been taken no of course of not. Of course not. I, but I, I have I think been. It should be beach combing with Steve. All right. We, we, you can change the title of a channel. You know what? You've got a hundred videos up. You can still change the title of the channel. Sure. I. Uh, you know, it seems to be showing you different things because I've been watching beach combing videos. Now, here's the thing. I feel, as Tim does, that we've been pigeonholed by uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, my, uh, despite my best efforts to provoke another YouTuber to mentioning me on this channel, uh, I, my, my new subs have plateaued. I get the same 7,000 people every video, which is great. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my 7,000 subs. But I, I look at I these... subscribed 7,000 times. Thank That's you. what thank it you, is. Thank you, my subs. Uh, uh, but I look at these beachcombing videos, and in English at least, the two epicenters seem to be the Pacific Northwest and Australia. And uh, even the crappiest beachcombing video uh, gets well, tens of thousands of views. Anyway, I think that there's a much wider audience for beachcombing videos, or almost any kind of videos, than there is for fat old white guy in Thailand videos. Uh, there's so many fat old white guys walking around Jump Pien Beach saying, well, this is a great beach. I've discovered the, the undiscovered gem of Padia, Jump Pien Beach, uh, you know. Well, let me tell you, out of all the beaches in Thailand, uh, Jump Tien Beach is probably the second worst and Pattaya probably the worst. Right, yeah. So I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah. mostly crap. So to be lumped in with that Sorry. is kind of disheartening. But so I'm going to see what happens. I'll launch a new channel uh, with hashtags like beachcombing, nothing, nothing Thailand, no, no, no salacious TNA photos, no trips T to this. TNA. Yeah, no, no, no sexy ladies, no walks down Soi Bang La, no, no uh, walking street videos, no 7-Eleven videos, just Steve on the beach. It'll be very similar to that content that exists on my channel now, but it'll be a whole half hour of that. And no, no talking about, you know, the rest of Thailand and, and we'll see what happens. We'll see if I can't break Interesting out of this experiment. cul de sac. Cause I'm sort of looking at the same thing mm -hmm. where, cause I'm very much pigeonholed as the, mm -hmm. the old white guy that does news in English right. about Thailand. Yeah. And uh, as somebody I think described me uh, old white guy that dresses like a pedophile doing news in Thailand, which I thought was a little bit unfair. Is there a uniform? I didn't. I didn't know. Yes, Is, I, th I, think I think we're wearing the uniform. I think if they go, when they go to their meetings, they have to wear like a fez and an apron. A but, uh, fez. A fez. Yeah. Or maybe a yeah. And an but, apron. And an apron. You sound like Tommy Cooper or something. The fez. Do you know the comedian Tommy the, Cooper? No. You don't. No. Oh, the funniest man that ever lived. No, I don't. He's English, very English. Uh, yeah. All right. Anyway, we digress. We digress, as usual. Yeah, as usual. Uh, but yeah, the fez is the Shriners and the apron is the Masons. And uh, this would be a, the, the joke, the humor lying in the supposition that there are meetings for pedophiles. I've never been invited, thank goodness. So. Neither me. Um, anyway. We got dark. We got dark quick. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, another topic. <laughs> Let's talk about something day. else. Yes. Uh, so, 
and YouTube's going, eh. <laughs> <laughs> talk about broccoli, talk about it's broccoli. True, sure. Anything but this, anything but this. So, um, uh, what else was I going to talk about before I Would you got like so me to, to address something? Yes, let, let's, All right. I'll remember mine as I go. Oh yeah, I'm talking about, because I wanted to do videos other than just uh, about news mm. in Thailand. And I've also been concerned, and somebody not very politely reminded me that I'm doing sort of news commentary and then throwing in an opinion which I, I think I make it quite clear when it's my opinion, maybe I don't, but people saying I shouldn't be combining the two. Yet, mm. that is sort of, I'm not actually just reading the news, I read things from the news, but I'm then saying, oh, it's interesting because it was reported differently in this news, or I don't think that's correct, or I usually mm. try and... Uh, or this is AI generated, yes. or why did they choose this word in this header? I think sure. all of that is perfectly legitimate, uh, particularly saying, uh, commenting on the writing of a news story, because journalism is going through this horrible uh, degradation, this horrible falling apart of what used to be a noble uh, profession. And now it noble? is... Noble? Yes. No, I think journalism, you know, there, there is in the American Constitution, perhaps the Australian Constitution, uh, rights to free speech are, are enshrined because that's necessary. A free press is necessary. A free and honest press is necessary to a healthy democracy. That unfortunately has been prostituted and bastardized. And what we have now is, is a pale, pale shadow of what the business and professional journalism used to be. Well, while we're on that, All right. let's just uh, talk uh, for a moment, seeing that we both are... You talk, I'll drink coffee. Uh, uh, ...ardents of um, social media anyway. Uh, there is one platform that the United States, even with its uh, dedication to free speech, says that the, the company ByteDance that owns or well, partly yes, the company that owns TikTok mm -hmm. is going to have to divest itself of the uh, the, the Chinese um, ownership. Now I checked during the week about who actually owns TikTok, and about 20% are the original founders who are from Beijing in China. 20%. Mm -hmm. Then there's 40% of the company that's owned by a whole lot of venture capital companies, most of them in the United States. Then there's a whole lot of other bits and pieces. But to say this is a Chinese company is, well, you'd, it's a real stretch. But I think the word Chinese has stuck onto TikTok and it's made a whole lot of legislators mm. in the United States very, mm, or we can't have this company selling private information given that it's already got YouTube and Google and Meta, stroke Facebook, that, that does that every single day of the week uh, mm. and approved apparently by the, uh, the US government to do mm. so. And, and meanwhile, all of those platforms are banned in China, including TikTok. Yeah. Chinese people can't use TikTok, can't use Google, can't use Facebook, as I understand it. I've never been to China. If I'm wrong, if Steve got it wrong, correct me in the comments. Haven't you been to China? Oh, God, oh, no. you've missed out. I've, I've been to Iowa and southern Thailand. That's about it. So uh, somebody was suggesting today, I think you responded about, uh, we should do a... Uh, on the road. Uh, on the road with Steve. And I said, mm. uh, that's not happening. Yeah. One, because he would I, drive me insane yes. after about an hour. Yeah. Yeah, and I ain't Willie Nelson. I don't travel well. I do so, not travel well. Wind no. your window, Steve, and uh, yeah, down, yeah. Steve, and blow the smoke out there. No, that would be a buddy film uh, of epic proportions that would end up with it wouldn't one be of us driving the car off a cliff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate the suggestion. Uh, uh, I like sometimes to watch buddy films, on the road films. Uh, what was it? After Midnight? It was a great film. Anyway, uh, but no, I don't. I don't intend to leave uh, Turtle Beach until they carry me off the beach in a black plastic bag. I'm not going anywhere. No, we can do a we can do a road trip from our houses to to the end of the road where it ends in the mangrove forest. That's about 10 kilometers of road. We can do a road trip there and back. We can double it. Uh, but yeah, no, we, I I ain't going we'll drive anywhere. slowly. No, I didn't bother to get a re-entry visa. I just. I'm here. I'm staying here. I love this place, man. Sure. I love this place to the depth of my marrow. I'm, I ain't going nowhere. 
The no. depth of your marrow. The depth of my marrow. Further than I need the to go. Width and breadth and, uh, the, the, the height and breadth and width that my soul can reach. Anyway. Anyway. So, so I'm a little bit So the Heron's confused. monument. Oh, go on. Go I, on. Well, I'm just a bit confused about this um, right to free speech that they have in the US. Oh, okay, go on. Uh, well, I, that's it. I, I just I, oh. I keep on hearing people saying, yeah. oh, we've yeah. got the right to free speech. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. do you? Well, what's, oh. cr what's crazy to me is that the, the Constitution, the, that amendment of First Amendment says Congress, it begins, Congress shall pass no law inhibiting the right of free speech. It is strictly, the Constitution of the United States is between you a citizen of the United States and your federal government, not you and your employer. Your employer can tell you what to say and not to say in public. All of us sign NDAs. I've never had a job. I worked in medical records keeping. I couldn't go home and tell in a small town. I would read that the, the, the kids football coach had gonorrhea. I couldn't go home and tell my wife or my mother, yeah, you know, Coach Jones has gonorrhea. What's you, his first name? <laughs> Bob Jones. Uh, all the time, your parents. Bob's your, got gonorrhea. Bob's got gonorrhea. Well, not now. They treated it. But uh, my point is, who did he sleep with? Anybody. The Constitution of the United States does, or your country, whatever it is, doesn't cover your relationship with your employer, your spouse, your parents, your children, your priest. People are told all the time what they can and cannot say in public by various constituencies. For so you reasons. Can't say, you're infringing my First Amendment right. If that's not your congressman or your senator, no, they're not infringing your First Amendment rights. So that's my that's my rant. Thank you for listening. About the Heroines Monument, though. Now, the Heroines Monument, for those people that have no idea what you're talking about, here's a photo. I hope I can find one and remember to edit it in. Uh, what what part of the video are we on? Just so I remember, there we are. I remember the chapter marking. Used to be on every postcard of, of Phuket. Yes. Every postcard, every what's on where to go, Phuket Magazine, Phuket Gazette. It's the in Heron's, Phuket, by the way. The Heroines Monument. It commemorates Tao Tepka Three and Tao Si Sun Torn. The two biggest roads on the island are named after these two women, the heroines. One goes that way and the other one goes that way. Yeah. And um, I love that there are some postcards that show Tepka Three Road heading away from the Heron's Monument towards Phuket Town, so south, lined with palm trees <laughs> along this wide thoroughfare to nowhere in particular. Mm. These days it's just shop yeah, houses no, all the terrible. way. It's terrible. Uh, so, we went there, mm. my wife and I, it used to be, if you launched anything on Phuket, like we were married on Phuket, uh, you went, part of it was going to the Heroines Monument, laying a wreath at the feet of the Heroines Monument. And I can remember our entire wedding party casually ambling across the traffic circle. These two figures, these two women, with their breasts bound so as not to impede a drawn bowstring. We better tell the story in a moment. In a moment. Yes. Uh, anyway, the entire wedding party, like 30 of us, including my mom, my ex-wife's parents, we, we, we walked casually across that traffic circle to the monument You'd to be lay our wreaths. dead now. Oh, God, yes. And, and people, people still do it, though. I see that there are wreaths there when I've gone past, yeah. And people try and they struggle across the three lanes of traffic in every direction, trying to get, and it's just like, uh, it's sort of gridlock. And the only thing that saves those people is the fact that the traffic is just yeah. crawling yeah. through. It's a roundabout that it's never open. It's a very different island. Let's just, it's yeah. a very different island, it's but. basically the middle of the island. Uh, it, it's I the intersection so. of. It, it was the big crossroads, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of the middle of the island. It's Patong, sort Kamalang, of in um, and, uh, the northern Kokgao, southern yeah. Talang, Sis uh, and Torn, and Tepkasatri Road, the main arteries yeah. that go north, south, east, west in Phuket. And those women are those people, that, those names. That's a a names. very interesting story, which you're going to tell I will. In, in 60 seconds. Well, this is. <laughs> This is why the heroines are the patron saintesses of uh, Phuket. And to some people, a symbol of the anti-royalist and anti-centralized government sentiment on Phuket. Uh, people in the South have never been big fans of what goes on in Bangkok. And the two heroines on Phuket are a symbol of that, much as this is a symbol of this and that things that we won't mention. But, so the Burmese have invaded back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Burmese tie back and forth. Oh, we're going to sack a UTO. We're going to sack Yangon. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. This is damp. Oh, it might still have water in it from uh, when I washed it. 
at any rate, uh, <coughs> so yeah, so on one of these many, many wars covering 700 years, uh, the Burmese were on their way south. They were marching south from Renong. They would come across at Renong and march south. And towards all the men, Phuket. Uh, towards Phuket, because Phuket even then was the prize. Phuket was what you wanted. And uh, all the men on the island were dead or fled, and the women and children and old people were left to defend the island. And many up in um, Ayutthaya <coughs> fighting the Burmese up there. Yes, so, off and on, off and on yes. over 700 years. And, and cutting the Burmese cut famously all the heads off all the Thai Buddhas, which is a very weird thing for Buddhists to do. Uh, but there's a lot of headless Buddhas. Uh, I've never been to Ayutthaya, but I understand there are a lot of headless Buddhas up there. At any rate, <coughs> this particular war, one of many, many wars between these two nations, uh, they were marching south. This, there was a walled city there, uh, a walled town where these two noble women, uh, Chan and Muk, were left to defend the city with old women and children. There was a lot of armor left around. The men had left their armor or died in their armor. So the women put on the armor. They cut palm fronds off the trees. They stripped the leaves off the palm fronds. So you had this tapered stick with a big fat end on it. Painted That'd scare those, me. Ta painted those black and held them as if they were muskets. This would have been the 15, 1600s when muskets were a new thing. And they stood on the walls with these fake muskets in armor, looking like men. And the Burmese came down and they looked through their spy glasses, another recent invention. And they saw these, what they thought were soldiers manning the walls with muskets. And they said, you know what, we've probably got enough loot for this war. Let's go back and raise sons to go pursue the next war. And they did. They turned their elephants around and walked away. And for that bit of wonderfully stereotypical female guile, Chan and Muk got names from the king in Bangkok, Tep, uh, Tao Tepka Sutri and Tao Si Sun Ton, and they got a statue eventually in the roundabout. And, and there's your story in and 60 seconds. And no Bob the Duck. How about that? <clears throat> I was sorely I'm tempted. Learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh, thanks paraphrase. For, thanks paraphrase. for that three minutes. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> The, the, uh, the, the statue remains today, and they're still facing yeah. the north of And Phuket. I have a question about that statue. That's so, what brought this all up 20 <laughs> minutes ago? The Heroines Monument. Mm. So uh, it is a very famous monument in Phuket. So here's my question. Right. They have uh, uh, apparently announced that they're going to start the much ballyhooed underpass oh. under the Heroines Monument. My question is, what happens to the monument? what happens to those two statues, because they are literally a sacred place. Those are sacred icons. This is like not so much Nelson on his tower, this is St. Peter's Basilica. What do you do? Do you leave them there and very carefully dig underneath them? Do you remove them to some other place, in which case where, because every village in, on the island will want them? They'll have to move them. You think? I would guess. Yeah, they, they can't drill underneath. Them. They've um, never been moved, as far as I know, since they were installed. Every time they do these underpasses, and it's the cheap way of doing it, is it's a, a cut and cover, mm. and to drill underneath them, like to go 10, 20, 30 meters, you'd need one of those big uh, mm. machines, those big uh, no, you nailed drills. it. The, the machine. Yeah, yeah. and that's uh, a technical term. Don't let the, the jargon mm. throw you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're not a digger. So I did write an article about what they were going to, proposing oh. to do. They were going to move the heroines. So I'll dig that out and send it All to right. you. All right, thank you. I, yeah. I was also going to say about the story, the wonderful story about the two heroines, <laughs> I suspect uh -huh. is probably anecdotal, is perhaps not exactly the way that it happened. But it has provided a wonderful myth for the island and yeah. something the locals still um, sure. d dine out on it at, at this stage. Uh, whether it actually happened or not, uh, the, the annals of history have not been kind to the story. There don't seem to be any actual sources that it really happened. But if not the enterprising ladies who defended uh, the, or, or led the defence of Phuket back in the 15, 1600s, some very enterprising locals came up with a 
rollicking good story. Well, I think either way. Yeah, probably these two women were uh, uh, historical and and did live and were noble women on this island. What they did, you know, it might have simply been, you know, they had a meeting with the Burmese general and said, "Listen, we'll give you ten gold pieces, twenty elephants, and, a few and you go away." Yeah, and and then. He said, all right, see you, you know, my son will see you in 25 years when he comes down here to invade. Yeah, what what actually, how, I mean, George Washington never cut down a cherry tree. Are there any, yeah, I know, right? Are there any, uh, or, or shit, stuff's turned around all the time. I was thinking of this recently. There's Did a, you say shit? No. You can't say shit. I didn't, shit. I didn't, I said stuff. Right. There is a figure in American history, uh, John Brown. He was an abolitionist. He John was Brown, John, John Brown's, Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. grave. I know that one. Yeah. And uh, that was the song that Union soldiers, I may have told this story on this show before. I apologize if I did. Uh, that, that was the song Union soldiers sang as they marched into battle in the Civil War. Well, John Brown was hung by the Union Army for sedition, for uh, staging an armed coup to try to take over the American government. So one year he was a he was hung by the neck as a traitor. The next year every soldier. Sorry, how he, else would he be hanged? He was uh, all right. He was hung until dead, uh, hanged until dead. But the very next year he was a hero, and he has remained a, a hero. Uh, and a American. song. Yeah, when he was hung by the U.S. government for being a rebel. So uh, yeah, history. Is there anything in Australia that say, you know, Vegemite doesn't really exist? Yeah, oh no, it clearly does. You tasted it last week. I did. And it is used for uh, lubricant on trucks uh, to this very day. Are there any myths um, in Australian history? I mean, remembering Austra Australian history is very, very, very young. Oh, true, Australia true. only became a nation in 1900 and... <coughs> one. Uh, 1901, okay. Yes, so it has a very, very, very young history. Most of Australia's uh, interesting history it goes back 40,000 years. Right. And uh, the Aboriginal people had a, a way of uh, telling stories and passing them on, not necessarily writing them down. So they were very, of course, subject to uh, embellishment. Um, and I think a lot of history, you know, history is usually owned by the, the victors. Uh, who, who Written paint, by the victor, yeah, yeah. Who, who paint their own version of uh, the way think they want things remembered. Now, I heard something about Australia, and maybe you can tell me if this is true or not. It's not true. So, when mankind left uh, Africa... Uh, yeah, I was around then, years, sure. Yeah. Uh, they went around the coast of the Indian Ocean. They would have come past here. They stuck to the coast, because that's where uh, food and water was easy to find. Every river eventually ends at the coast and there's always food in the tide pools. So humankind, over thousands of years, as they left Africa, they went north, and they went north uh, 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 west as well, but they came northeast around uh, the Indian Ocean, Asia. down through Indonesia, Java, Bali. Now, the jumping off place for them to then get to be Aborigines in Australia would have been Timor. And you cannot see Australia from Timor. So how did they know to build rafts and go south uh, ah, to Australia? Good question. I was there. Well, okay. Uh, well, it's not only how did you know to go south? It's not just Timor. You've got Timor, you've got uh, parts of Indonesia, and then you've also got Papua New Guinea. Oh, is that all south of Timor? Uh, oh, well, right. it, this is American geography. This is, um, this is, I blame the public schools in Iowa. So hang on. We're just going <laughs> to... Just do a quick ah, check on ah, this. Ah, ah. Um, Australia, Australia's let us all rejoice. Where are we? Australia images. I want a fucking map. Where are we? Australia. Oh, hang on. I should be in Google. Excuse me for a moment. I'm just checking something. Nothing me, to do with what Steve I, was talking while about. While you're doing that, can I ask our brain trust something? Sure. I want to ask you something. Here we go. The first time I came to Thailand as an adult, I came as a child, but as an adult. Ah. Okay, go on. Go on, no, 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 keep, keep going, Steve. This will be brief. I came as an adult, I was 33 when I came as an adult, and I brought condoms, all right? I came back two years ago at 65, and I brought nitroglycerin for my heart. 
What did you bring? What did you think was necessary when you came? What, what did you bring with you from X? Now for the Thai people who are watching this, you, you may not answer, but there may be something when you go visit the United States or you go visit Beijing or you go to, what's that island? Oz, Oz, Osmania, something like that. Uh, when you go abroad, is there something from Thailand that you feel like you must take with you? That was my question. All right, go on. Okay, so, so there's, jump in. there's oh. Timor, there's Papua New Guinea, um, very close to Australia. Well, so is Timor, but yeah, Papua New Guinea is closer, Not as closer, close as that, it? there we yeah. go. Yeah, okay. So how would they, have, it still would have been over the horizon, now, I would It guess. was joined. In those oh, days, it, there was a land, a land bridge. bridge. Yes. Jenks wanted to build There you go, you oh, see? Oh, okay. So this, uh, apparently the land bridge was there until, uh, we're told by geologists, some 40,000 years ago, where Australia became its own um, continent and island, or it's at the same time. And nobody likes I'm to show sure up I'm making to, this up. Nobody likes to show up. Yeah. And then um, Australia developed its own very uh -huh. unique flora and fauna, uh -huh. which we go a long way to protect to this very day. So if you arrive at immigration in Australia, the reception is probably the uh, the most detailed reception that you ever get. They will check everything in your luggage, especially you. But they still can't speak English. What? 40,000 years later. <laughs> well, here's, you know, here's a question I, I have. I think that's roughly right. I'm sure we're going to get some people saying, no, 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 Tim, you're wrong. But well, no, it, the, the, it, you, there used to be a land bridge. Tim got it wrong. Okay, now I know. Uh, I had another question, which, which, which uh, kind of feeds into this idea of altered history, how we view events in history and how people... Uh, have you noticed how Robert E. Lee has fallen out of favor? What, you mean the guy who led the Confederacy, killed hundreds of thousands, or I don't know, millions of Americans in the, in the, the effort to overthrow the American government? That guy has recently fallen out of favor? Anyway, don't, don't, don't let me digress. I mean, in this country- I they, thought the Robert E. Lee was a boat. Oh sure, waiting for the Robert E. Lee. It was a, a what a casino boat. It was a paddler, a paddle wheel boat. There yeah, you go. The Robert that's, E. Lee. I don't know. Because in the South, they they don't call it the Civil War. They call it the War for Southern Independence, and they still very much would like to be independent. In 1991, I went on a group study exchange with my local Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a member of Rotary, but I was a notable young man apparently. And they said we're going to send him. Or maybe it was a one-way ticket. We're going to send him to get him out of town to do the uh, the group study exchange. And we had two choices: we could go to Bangladesh, or we could go to Louisiana and Mississippi. Ooh, there's a tough choice. Yeah, so I That's thought a hard choice. Mm, let me think about that. <laughs> I want to go it's to. It's a hardship posting either way, man. So we uh, we spent six weeks going around, and we'd stay two days here, two days there, two, and we went around staying with all these lovely families, and then we'd speak at the lo local, as my sister called it, Goatery Club. Uh, she was a member of Rotary for many, many, many years. I'm, I think it was the drinking that encouraged her. Anyway, uh, it was very interesting, but uh, we ran into some fascinating people, because we'd go to the, uh, the, the, the Rotary meetings and we'd talk about you know, living in Australia and blah, 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 tennis and stuff. And um, it seemed Penguins. to be the only thing that, that was a common yeah. topic was tennis. Uh, Here, try this. It's called Vegemite. Try this. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have gone down well. We were down in like the, the deep south. Uh -huh. This is Louisiana and Mississippi and New Orleans and... Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. At one... Um, I don't know, I've forgotten the story I was going to tell. Oh, that's right. And in those days, I'm not sure if they still do it. This is, what, 30-odd years ago, 33 years ago. We'd drive around and people would still fly the Confederate flag. Oh yeah, they still Quite do. proudly yes, out the front yes. of their homes. And I think everybody at these Rotary Clubs was of the political bent where they thought that the Confederacy was a good idea or something. Yes. And yes. so I mean, you get into the conversation with these people and after you get past the Australian tennis player conversation, th then we'd sort of get on to, um, yeah, I asked one of them one day, um, just a question, 
what's the sort of modern attitude here in the South about uh, the, the Civil War? Is it still something, uh, you know, I mean, losing it must have, excuse me, we didn't lose it, we came second. <laughs> Without a single look of irony no. on his face, we came second. And some of their questions about Australia, uh, I was asked, and speaking about tennis, uh, where, where did your Australian tennis players learn to speak English so well? Um, they have special schools for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what, what's your attitude about um, uh, losing the Second World War and Hitler being born in Australia? <laughs> so all these strange questions we got. Yeah, in American schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, uh, I, I, I spent a lot of... of Digressing. In the South. Yeah, I worked at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. Have you been to a Mardi Gras? On the island of Trinidad, I went to Carnival. Trinidad. Well, claims I haven't done that's, that. That's where Carnival started. They claim, and certainly it is historical fact, they invented the steel drum on uh, the island of Trinidad. And I spent a year on Trinidad teaching medical. I oh, see. So you have got around a bit more than I thought. Well, yeah, here and there. I went to Mexico. I lived on Guam for two years. Well, as, not, as a child, none we of this has come out before. No, we, we, as a child, I visited Bangkok several times, Hong Kong, Guam? Kuala Lumpur. I had my 10th birthday uh, in a hotel in Hong Kong, and I was really depressed about being there on my 10th birthday. My mom said, Listen, we'll go to dinner. I'll, you can have anything you want to eat. So we're in some hotel in Hong Kong and, and we go like at five in the evening to the, and nobody's, there's nobody in the restaurant. And I said, I want tacos. She said, we're in Hong Kong. You want tacos? You said I could have anything I want for my birthday. So she explained to the waiter what a taco was and they went in the kitchen and they came out and they had taken mushu pancakes and put some shredded pork in there. They had everything except the cheese. They had onions, they had uh, bok choy shredded up to be faux lettuce. And they had created this beautiful plate of faux tacos. Fabulous. And they brought it to the table and I wasn't prepared. I was prepared to throw a hissy fit because they didn't have tacos and I was gonna Rrr. And instead they, they went out of their way and I look at the kitchen door and everybody in the kitchen, there's heads lined up in the kitchen door looking at me to see if this kid all alone in the dining room is going to eat his tacos. So I did. I had to. That was my 10th birthday. But yeah, yeah. as a kid, uh, we got around. I've never been to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. No. I have. I had beads thrown at me. Yes. Um, in those days when people thought I was worth throwing beads at. You're playing yeah. with the cable. Oh, right. if Steve, Touching the table, too. If Steve's sound's gone all wonky, you'll know why. Uh, so yeah, I have been to um, <laughs> New Orleans and in, during Mardi Gras. Um, okay. I was engaged to be married in Memphis, Tennessee. I lived for a year and a half in Memphis, Tennessee, and I was engaged with Southern Belle in Memphis, Tennessee. I've been to, of all the places I really enjoy in the States, I've been to about 20 of the states in the United States. You can't me be. I, oh, what's the place where they record the country music? Uh, Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. So I've been to Nashville. That was fascinating. I'll bet. The Grand Old Opry, I think it's called. Opry. Opry. Yeah. And I've been to Dollywood. Oh my God. Which is a theme park <laughs> dedicated uh, to uh, Dolly Parton. Yeah. That was fabulous. I'll bet. It I love really Dolly. was. I love Dolly. There's never been a musical genius like Dolly. Keep your Mozart. No, Dolly Parton. Did, Fantastic. Did you see her guest appearance on the, um, oh, what was the show called? It's a science fiction show that Seth, I can't even remember his name. The, the guy that did Family Guy, oh, Seth, Seth McFarlane. McFarlane. And the show was called, oh, the, the Star something Trek. with an O. Orville. Orville. It was an ode, ode to Star Trek, basically. Yeah, something like that. Uh, made with a lot of love and started off as a comedy, ended up quite earnest. Yeah. But Dolly Parton is playing Dolly Parton in one of the episodes. You just got to see it. You think, how can they get Dolly Parton in a science fiction show? Yeah. But they did. I touched her butt once. She sat on my I'm hand. sorry? Yeah, I've told this story. Uh, I don't know if I've told it here. I've told it on my channel. I was dressing a set for the Oprah show and uh, she was interviewing the cast of a movie called Steel Magnolias, 
So that place isn't in time for you. When Steve's movie career was? Early 90s? Yeah, it would have been, uh, well, no, I came to Thailand in the early 90s, so 88, 89. Uh, at any rate, so I got a, I was a day player, I got a job, set dressing for the Oprah show. Oprah had left Chicago for a week of shows in New York City. And she was going to interview these seven women, who big stars, all of them, who were the, the stars of Steel Magnolias. So she gets this and, hotel. And we're going to list them in just a moment. Maybe. So we're going to, uh, 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 so she's shooting in the ballroom on the top of this, this hotel, and she's rented the whole ballroom. So I was told to gather seven chairs, visually interesting chairs from anywhere in the public areas of the hotel and get a bunch of throw pillows because what they were going to do is mount two cameras in the middle of the circle and put all these women in a circle and two cameras in the middle so you could go around as, as trying to interview seven women at once. It's tough. So, For so many reasons. So the, cameras, so the cameras would never see each other. The cameramen are back to back in the middle of the circle. So Steve gets seven uh, chairs, put them in a circle in the middle of the ballroom, find a bunch of throw pillows because like Dolly Parton's five feet tall, Daryl Hannah's six foot three. So because we don't want the cameras going up and down, up and down, we just want to go flat across in a pan. So we've got to prop the shorter actresses up. Uh, Shirley McLean was short, I think. So Steve's there. Sally Fields? Sally Field, uh, J Jolene, uh, what's her name? Isn't it Jolie and... Uh, Jane Fonda? No, no. no anyway, no. anyway, anyway. Uh, at any rate, so all the people come in, they, all these stars come in with an entourage. Everybody's got an entourage. There's like 50 people in this room. Where's my entourage? Exactly. Where's my trailer? Yes. And uh, there's a circle of chairs and all these big actresses come and they sit in these chairs. Okay, it's Steve's big moment. Steve's got an arm of throw pillows. The director of photography is in the middle with his cameras and we're going slowly around. Okay, these two people are the same height. We've got to prop everybody up to Daryl Hannah's height. So, okay, one pillow under Shirley McLean. Miss McLean, please stand up. Steve, put a pillow. Sit down, Shirley. She sits down. Okay, great. We go next. We go next. We get to Dolly. Steve's behind her. Dolly's in the middle of telling a joke to the room. And she slays. She's a very funny woman. So the director of photography is tired to press ahead. Dolly, excuse me, Dolly, Dolly could, could you could you stand up, stand up, please? So she's in the middle of telling a joke. She stands up, and so Steve, okay, put a pillow. All right, Dolly, sit. Dolly, Dolly, sit. sit. Okay, thank you. She sits. Still not tall enough. She's got to get to Daryl Hannah height. All right, stand up, Dolly. Dolly, please step. Do excuse me, Dolly, please stand up. She stands up. Steve, put another pillow. I put a pillow. She hits the punchline of her joke. I told him where I come from, the mosquitoes are so big, they screw the turkey standing up. And she sits on her punchline on my hand. The room erupts in laughter. It's a good joke. It's a good line. And everybody's laughing. And Dolly's kind of rocking. And my hand is trapped under her butt. Between, and there's, there's two throw pillows. She doesn't know my hand's there. I'm not like, I'm like this. <laughs> and slowly, everybody in the room looks over Dolly's shoulder to see Steve's terrified face. Oh, help me, I'm trapped, help me. Everybody in the room is looking at Steve and Dolly has no idea I'm there. She's just rocking and laughing and laughing. And finally, uh, the DP says, uh, Dolly, stand up, please. And she stands up and I ah, get my hand out of there right away. Releasing you from your Releasing imprisonment. Releasing from bondage. I, probably to this day, she has no idea that my hand was under her butt. You, the um, fingerprints are probably still. Well, I didn't wash that hand for weeks. She's a gorgeous woman. And I'm, I'm right behind her and I'm looking down, all right? Now, Dolly is, I don't know how familiar you are with Dolly. She's well endowed. Yes. She is naturally a, 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 a voluptuous woman. And I'm right over her shoulder and I'm looking down into the bodice of her, her dress and I'm trapped. I can't get away, right? And everybody in the room knew it was happening except Dolly Parton. Anyway, there's that. I have more stuff here. Did you want to? I, I want... Uh, you Which hand to, was it? You didn't have to duck me once. Was it left hand? Right hand. Right hand. Oh, no, no. This is my pillow hand. Can I look at your hand? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I haven't the washed hand. it. I haven't washed it, it since was 1989. <laughs> I haven't washed it. 
Uh, don't forget, I asked you, uh, Brain Trust, what you brought to Thailand, what you think is necessary to come here from your home country. Maybe it's Vegemite. I don't know. I brought uh, the pro well, my sister if, brought the Primark. If you're Thai or any other brand of Asian, mm. uh, what do you take when you go abroad? When you visit, what's the name of that country? Australasia uh, or America or Europe? What, what do you take with you? What do you? Do, are you disappointed to find no bum gun? If you are forced to use toilet paper, is that is that a burden? I you, could I could not go back to toilet paper. Ooh, I'm no, sorry, no. no. That will never I, happen. I take a full on shower every time. <laughs> Uh, oh, only one person. You, you may remember last time I asked, uh, boy, I'm really loud in this little coffee shop, aren't I? Uh, I asked if anybody knew there was this thing I remembered seeing, and I haven't seen it since coming back, biting the corner off a pack of cigarettes in order to be able to fold the tinfoil and plastic back over a very small hole to keep your cigarettes from getting wet in the monsoon or if you're a fisherman or your motorcycle I've taxi driver. I've never heard of this. Never heard of it. Well, only one correspondent wrote in to say, and I'm sorry, I didn't write down your name, I wrote in to say that he's seen that, he's familiar with that. In Isan, they're still doing that. Nobody else. So I guess it is a, a dying art form. Yeah. <clears throat> and the yeah. Beachcombing Channel, that was the last thing I had. Uh, well, I think... Your Dolly Parton story is a good place to finish. <laughs> How I can't better that. Um, Big enough to screw the turkey standing up. <laughs> She's a very funny lady. She's uh, <laughs> much loved to this very day. Oh yeah. How she old is she? She wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You on the same day. Two of the biggest songs in the history of American popular music. She wrote him in the same day. She's a poet. She should have been the poet laureate of the United States. Uh, she also love wrote, me some Dolly. Um, I, love you. I think she wrote "I Honestly Love You" by Olivia Newton-John. I think she she wrote some, some hundreds of songs. Hundreds yeah. of songs. Hey Siri, how old is Dolly Parton? Any guesses? Uh, a little older than me, seventy. I'll say. You'd be surprised. 78. 78. Right. Yeah. And she's still performing? Yes. Um, Making guest appearances on TV big. shows. Yeah. So uh, with that... Um, Married to the same man God. since she was, what, 15? Yes. Something yes. like that. And he's never, he doesn't appear in public. He doesn't give interviews. We, nobody knows what he looks like. Yeah, amazing. Amazing yes. woman. Some of us All like right, to keep up. our private lives private. I'll so, shut up uh, Yes. Yeah, listen to the thunderous <clears throat> applause. Steve's going to shut up. Bravo! So we are, Stephen and I, out this afternoon to do our, uh, our water dance, trying to uh, encourage the gods to uh, throw some rain in our direction. We didn't even talk about my vow of silence. What, you spoke about that on your... Yes, I did. I did. If I you want to about know it. about Steve's vow of silence, heaven forbid it could yeah. last. It, it, you didn't make it, did you? No. It did, didn't last yeah. very long. He spoke about it on his own YouTube channel which you can go to after this and which is called Steve Ross most I don't know how you came up with that name I did my father weeks. did he changed his name from Rosenberg on his 18th birthday oh, no one knows why never heard that nobody before. knows why so I've got to take a photo of the stealth turtle mm -hmm. and I've got to put a photo of the heroines monument so people have some idea <coughs> what we're talking about photo of Dolly wouldn't hurt I'd look at Dolly Sure. Any chance I got. She's definitely worth looking at. And immortalized. I don't even know if it's still there in Nashville, but I thoroughly enjoyed, out of all the places I visited in the US, um, I loved Chicago, but I was mugged in Chicago, so I don't have fond memories of Chicago. <laughs> and I certainly remember Nashville, the Grand Opry, and Dollywood. And with that, we thank you very much for watching. Steve Ross with an E, uh, thank you for uh, dropping in. Uh, thank you, Tim Newton without an E. Bob the Duck. And uh, thank you for watching. Yes. And watch out for Steve's new YouTube channel, which is called... Beachcombing on Turtle Beach, Thailand. What if you want to go beachcombing somewhere else? I don't want to. Well, that's a fair point. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.